Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to First Christian Church. If you're joining us in person, online, or for the first time, we are glad that you're here. I invite you to hear these words from Psalm 138, which our children worship and wonder participants will hear today in their own worship space. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. With God's steadfast love in our hearts, let us prepare for worship. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the sinner, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, not the deacon, not the teacher, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. As we go to God in prayer this morning, uh, we give thanks to a God who holds our prayers with us. Um, those prayers that we share aloud this morning, those prayers that we are holding on to, uh, those prayers that we are still finding our words for. Uh, we're grateful for the prayers that you share with us, and so we lift up a few specific prayer requests this morning. Uh, Ann Fields is still in hospice, and so we continue to hold Ann and her family close in our prayers. Um, it is in love that we pray with them. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, for Kim Somerville's friend's dad, um, who is nearing the end of his life, uh, we pray with them for peace and comfort to surround them in this time. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, for our children this morning, as they return uh, to worship and wonder, uh, we give thanks for that special space and for the love and imagination that is nurtured there. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we ask for prayers for our first group of campers that are coming home from mini camp today. Uh, we pray that it was a fun and joy-filled weekend at Camp Wakandaho uh, and for the summer ahead. 
Uh, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Kelly Knuckles' mom, who we have been praying for, uh, passed away last night. Um, we hold Kelly and his family close as they grieve uh, and celebrate the life of their beloved. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. And for Vicki Elrod's granddaughter, who just turned three and then broke her leg this weekend, um, for strength and for healing, uh, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, let us continue in this spirit of prayer together. Would you pray with me? Loving God, creator, sustainer, creator of the universe, lover of our souls, you call us to always be in your presence. You promise to always be with us wherever we are. We are grateful to enter into this time and this space to worship you, to acknowledge that you are here and that we are indeed your people, a time to be still and know that you are our God. We confess that often in the midst of our living, we forget that. We follow after false gods. We chase after things that hurt and don't build up. We fail to acknowledge all your creation as precious in your sight. We seek forgiveness, forgiveness for things seen and unseen, known and unknown. Help us both to see our sin and to work at letting it go. Our hearts are thankful for days that seem more hope-filled. Spring has come, living in familiar ways has seemed possible. We greet one another in joyful reunion. Our hearts seem to be a little bit more full. Today is a day of joy and thanksgiving. Our children will once again open their own worship space a space designed to let the children come, a space of story and wonder, creativity and stillness, a place of your acknowledged presence. We seek your blessing today on your children and on this place of worship, a place that acknowledges that you are a God of all times and all places and all ages. You are a God who welcomes children and acknowledges their place in your kingdom here on earth, a place where children have all the time they need to say, thank you, God. I'm sorry, God. Please take care of these people, God. Bless our storytellers and greeters, our planners, and those who pray for this program. It is done in your name. We offer prayers for our sick and our discouraged for those whose futures seem unknown. Remind us how close you are to them and to us. We pray for our nation, its leaders, its joys and its traumas, for those whose lives have been lost so other lives could be saved. Guide us through the valleys of shadows to our safe places with you. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask that the children who are here going to children worship this morning will come down right in front of the pulpit for just a minute. When we finish children worship on a Sunday morning, the children always come to the storyteller for a special blessing. Well, we want to bless them this morning as they go to worship. So I'm going to ask that the children come right here and meet Miss Kyle. Come meet Miss Kyle. Come right over there by her. Good deal. Oh, I'm so glad you brought your friend the elephant this morning. That's a good thing. God blesses you as you move this morning to your worship and wonder space, a space that's been made just for you. 
we know that God is with us in all times and all places. So God is here, and God is on the way down the hallway, and God will be with you upstairs in your special room. May God's blessings be on you this morning. Amen. We are so grateful for our worship and wonder leaders, um, especially this week, uh, Mary Jane Morris and Debbie Neal and Petey McLean joined Kyle and spent an entire day getting the worship and wonder space ready for our children. And it is just such a joyful day to see them return to that space. I know my girls were ready. This morning, our gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. And this summer, I uh, feel like I should just tell you in advance that we are following the lectionary, which is the assigned scripture readings that many churches follow. And so we're calling this FCC's Summer of Fun. The fun for the preachers this summer is that we're not preaching the text that we would choose or that we would pick as our favorite, but those that have been assigned to us. And so I invite us um, to listen with open hearts um, to this challenging text, believing that there is good news for us here today. Then he went home and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub. And by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an, of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of God, and in it we can trust. My friend Allison and I joined a few other friends for a hike while we were on retreat in Black Mountain a few weeks ago. She and our friend Diane have a running joke about the hikes that Diane takes Allison on. Laid back Diane, when asked about the hike, will usually say, oh, I think it's about a medium level difficulty. And inevitably, when Allison gets there, it is rugged paths, steep inclines, and a much longer distance than anticipated. 
Well, this time was no different. Diane saying about five minutes in, oh, maybe it is a little more difficult than I remembered. And Allison secretly catching my eye and rolling hers. And so we climbed and climbed and climbed. When our entire group was breathing heavily and Allison started to get cranky, Diane said in her calm, cheerful voice, hey, we're almost there. Now it's time for the rock climbing. (laughs) To give you a little more context of this moment, Allison came to our retreat in desperate need for a break. I've told many of you from the pulpit actually before about her adopting her amazing son, Spencer, who is nothing short of a miracle. Allison basically woke up one day and decided that God was calling her to be a mom. And so despite not having found her partner yet, she started the foster to adoption process. The story of her church accompanying her through the adoption of a newborn is incredible. But when COVID started, Allison lost much of her support system because of the necessity of isolation. For over a year, mostly Allison kept her two-year-old Spencer out of daycare. She parented him by herself and also, by the way, she was running a nonprofit and a church amidst the pandemic. So I probably don't have to tell you that the first day of our retreat, I could see the exhaustion in Allison's eyes. But over the week, her spirit came back to life as she reconnected with God and her innermost self. So anyways, back to the hike. Allison is not very happy when we get to the rock climbing part. But amidst complaints, she keeps putting one foot in front of the other and taking a hand as help when needed as we slowly made our way up, up, up the rocky mountainside. Finally, we made it to the glorious top. And I leaned over to her and whispered, Allison, you did it. You climbed this mountain. But what you did last year, it was a lot harder than even that. And you did it. At first, she stayed toward the center of the mountaintop on the flat and secure places. But after taking a few deep breaths and shedding a few tears, she went over to the edge and said, hey, would you take my picture? We may have the picture, I don't know. There's Allison. It was a beautiful moment. And I will tell you, I had to stop myself from texting. On that mountaintop, I thought of a lot of you guys and the hard things of this last year. So I don't know if God is actually up in the sky. I don't think that, I don't think the exact coordinates of God are known to mere mortals. But up on that mountaintop, I will tell you that God felt closer. Our saints felt closer. Life felt more real. It was incredible. So after taking our time, breathing in all that grace, we finally, with a little bit of sadness to leave, started our descent. We were almost to the bottom of the mountain when my friend Allison, who I have been friends with for over 10 years, said in a passing comment, I hate heights. (laughs) And I was like, wait, wait, what? Are you serious? I thought you just didn't like hiking. 
You mean to tell me that you were afraid this whole entire time? Allison hates heights. I am afraid of snakes, which are out in large quantity in our countryside this year. What are you most afraid of? Frederick Beekner writes, here is the world. Beautiful things and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. But fear is a powerful force. It has the ability to stop us from doing amazing things. It has the ability to make us push away people we love, to make our hopes, our dreams, our very lives smaller. Fear can keep us at the bottom of the mountain and even distance us from God. Fear is no doubt a powerful force. So I will tell you, I have studied this scripture a lot this week. And it is a doozy. We were supposed to be having SCC Summer of Fun, but this text is a monster. As much as I've read the Gospel of Mark, I had to read this scripture probably six times before I could even start reading any commentaries on it. So rather than trying to tackle every crevice and cranny of the text for today, I had a different idea. I want us to look at it with one theme in mind, and that theme is fear. But first, let's try to break this scripture down into a little more digestible terms. Our scripture for today is what is known as a Markin sandwich, which always makes me think of Bob McDaniel, who calls them a Big Mark. The bread is Jesus's conflict with his family and powerful religious leaders on either side of the scripture lesson. And the meat is the parable of the strong man. Both of these are demonstrating Jesus's urgent mission to bring about a new kind of kingdom. He demonstrates with his rejection of kinship norms that he is bringing a new world order. And we would be wise to remember that this is a really big deal. Like in Jesus's day, your family was everything. It determined where you worked and how you socialized and even your personality. To reject your family was to reject life as you knew it. It wasn't like, oh, see you, mom and dad, I'm off to college. No, it was a complete rejection of all societal norms. Okay, so those are the basics that a week's worth of study and an MDiv will get you about the text. But even knowing all of that, I just cannot get out of my head the way that Jesus talks to his siblings, but more importantly, the way he talks to his mama. Like I'm thinking it is a good thing that the gospel writers didn't include much of what women had to say. (laughs) Because I feel certain that if they did, Mary would have uttered some version of, son, I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. (laughs) The audacity of Jesus to speak to his family like that publicly, it takes my breath away. 
which as I sat with this text, that was when I knew I was starting to understand it. When Jesus says and does things that are so outrageous, they are offensive. That is when we are called to lean in and say, hmm, okay, God, what are you trying to tell us here? Which brings me back to our theme for the day, fear. The reason I am so offended by Jesus' words is because I am a mother. It is my job to worry about my children, to protect them and keep them safe. And let me tell you, if Maybelle and Evie Ray were out doing things that could get them nailed to a cross, my words for them would not be polite enough to share in church. <laughs> but we have to remember that Jesus is trying to bring about the kingdom of God. And I wonder if the mockery he makes of his family isn't really about his family at all, but about the powers that be and the fear that causes us to think that the way things are is the way that things have to stay because fear is a powerful force. At the beginning of this same chapter, if you read a little bit ahead, Jesus heals that man with the withered hand. And he does it on the Sabbath day. And the religious leaders, they cannot understand. So it says that Jesus is outraged at their hardness of heart. You see, they are so afraid of breaking the rules, of changing their sacred traditions, of doing things differently, that they get in the way of the healing of their very own people. Their fear has turned their hearts hard. And listen, those religious folks and Jesus' family, they had every reason in the world to be afraid. Which is why I wonder if that is why he had to take such drastic measures and tell these outrageous stories to help folks overcome that fear. And so I wonder, and I will ask you again, maybe it's more than snakes or heights or spiders. What are you most afraid of? But instead of getting mad or disappointed in ourselves for being afraid, what if instead we could name our fears as valid? Like we don't give them any value as good or bad, we just name them and let them be. Here are some of my fears. Will the church be okay post-pandemic? Will my kids thrive when they start kindergarten? Have we done enough to get them ready? And also because my girls grew up in the country, I am afraid they are going to go to the bathroom outside during recess on their first day of school. <laughs> if you hear rumors, they are probably true. <laughs> Y'all, there is nothing wrong with having fears. The problems come when we start making decisions based in those fears. For example, before I left for retreat, I was so stuck in my unreasonable fear of if the church would be okay post-pandemic that I stopped dreaming about what it would look like for the church to be more than okay. And going to the mountains, I realized that no, we won't be okay because we are called to be, to do more than just survive. 
We are called to be a family for those who don't have one. And we are called to care for the poor and to bring about healing in our community. We are called to be the living, breathing body of Christ. And so, heck no, we won't be okay. Instead, we will live. So those are my fears. I hope that you will take some of your fears and ask if they might be making your worldview too small. How fear might be getting in the way of what the Holy Spirit can do. Because in our scripture lesson for today, Jesus could not stop. The power of the Holy Spirit in him, a power that was healing the sick and threatening political leadership, a power that broke the rules in the name of grace, a power that wanted to turn the world order on its head, a power that named that family isn't just the one you are born into, but that we belong to each other in a much more expansive sense. You see, when we let our fears make our decisions, we dream too small. We think if I do this and if I do that, then it will be good enough. And we accept good enough as the life that we are called to. But what if there are parts of our lives worth plundering? What if we are being called beyond our fear and into the dreams that God has placed before us. What if the climb is long and scary and hard and seems impossible at times, but it is leading us toward something breathtakingly beautiful? I still don't know about this scripture. Maybe Jesus was just in a bad mood and mouthed off to his family. He was human, after all. But maybe, just maybe, there is some really good news here. And it is telling us, church, whispering in our ears, do not be afraid. Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. And love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am 
a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. This past week I had the opportunity to check in with my Bethany Fellows small group, um, and as part of that check-in, we were asked this question, where are you experiencing curiosity emerging? And maybe that's a good follow-up to that question of what is it that we are afraid of. It's a question that has kind of lingered with me over the last few days, as it feels like we're in this sort of emerging breakthrough moment. Y'all, that uncertainty is a little bit scary, and fear could harden our hearts, or we can live into a little bit of wonder uh, to be a little curious. Makes me think of our worship and wanderers this morning who are spending time together learning the language and practicing that faithful curiosity. I wonder, they'll say and they'll hear again and again in that space, I wonder. And so as I feel excited and anxious and hopeful about how God is cultivating new life around us as we begin to live into that summer of fun, of reconnecting, of cultivating joy, it has sparked a healthy curiosity, and that feels like a good place to rest for a minute. This invitation to Christ's table is also an invitation into wonder, into imagination, into curiosity. I wonder how God is going to meet us here, or maybe better yet, how we will meet God here. I wonder how we will experience Jesus being made known in the breaking of bread or the crinkling of communion packets. I wonder how we might receive and respond to that curious good news that we are affirmed and invited and incredibly loved. We are invited, just as we are, to wonder, to imagine, And to remember, it was on that night Jesus gathered with his friends and his disciples. He took a loaf of bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it out. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life and the cup of God's love for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Let us pray. God of love, we give you thanks for this bread of life, for this cup of your love for us, for a table to which all are welcome. We come this morning with a little bit of curiosity, with a spirit of of adventure. And so we pray that we might be present to all the ways that you are showing up stirring us and loving us, and that it might sustain us as we continue to be your table people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're in the sanctuary with us, you should have found your little communion packets in your pew. Um, If you didn't, or if you need help, raise your hand and somebody can help you with that. Um, If you're worshiping at home, uh, we are glad that you are here, and we say we are with you. This is the bread of life and the cup of God's love for you.
as part of First Christian Church's Summer of Fun 2021, you are invited to participate in a Summer of Fun service project. Last year, FCC partnered with Bowling Green City Schools to assist with a massive effort to ensure kids were being fed amidst a pandemic. While this summer won't be quite as involved, Dala Emerson, director of the city school's food program, has asked FCC to help once again. There are two ways you can help. First, you can volunteer to help with the meal boxes on Thursdays at Bowling Green Middle School. Volunteers are asked to serve from 9 to 12 and will be helping with meal boxes that provide families seven days worth of meals and you can sign up online for that. Second, there will be a toy drive. Since we decided God was calling us to a summer of fun, we also decided that we needed to share the love. In conversation with Dala, we have identified an apartment complex with about 40 families with young children living below the poverty line. We will be collecting toys for these kids to get out and have a great summer outdoors. You can bring the following items to First Christian Church and the ministers will deliver them on one of the food delivery days. So you are invited to bring jump ropes, sidewalk chalk, hula hoops, bubbles, and any kind of sports ball that you choose. We thank God that First Christian Church is a generous and loving church that cares for its community whenever there is a need. What better way to spend the summer than providing joy for Bowling Green's children and youth? Thank you for your gifts. If you're here with us this morning, you're welcome to place your gifts in the basket as you leave. If you're online, um, you can send in a check via mail or drop one off in the lockbox outside. You can also click the link to give there as well. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for these gifts. Gifts that we know can find, uh, can fulfill others and give joy to others this summer. We pray for a summer of fun for all, for these children that are in need. We pray that those who need food will receive the food that they need. And we thank you, God, for a church that is willing to give when there is a great need. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Before we go, we have a few announcements, and I was thinking during our prayer time of someone we didn't lift up, um, Francis's grandson, Daxton, um, had a major surgery this week in Philadelphia. The good news, it's for his, he has scoliosis. Um, the good news is the surgery was successful, but there is a long recovery ahead, and so um, let's continue praying for Daxton that um, he will have um, less and less pain and will have patience for that recovery. Um, all right, so the announcement that I have for today is that as a part of our summer of fun, are we having fun yet? Um, as a part of our summer of fun, we will have VBS for our children and a staycation slash local mission opportunity for our middle and high school youth. Vacation Bible School will be July 16th and 17th, and signups will be available soon. Um, but if you are interested in volunteering, we'll still need volunteers. Um, we're doing it over a weekend, a Friday evening, and then all day Saturday. Um, if you want to volunteer, please contact Kyle. Um, the middle and high school youth event is going to be July 15th through 17th, and you can sign up and find more information through the links in the youth news and the e-news. Also, kickball signups are still up. Will you rise for our benediction? God, we give you thanks that you call us uh, to live out big dreams for our lives and for our world. Be with us as we close our worship, that we would be rooted in your love and that we would not let fear make our decisions. God, we thank you for this season of summer when we can breathe deeply of your grace. 
be with us as we leave here today. Amen. Go in peace. Is it a light of mine? I'm gonna let it shine. Is it a light of mine? I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All through SEC, I'm gonna let it shine. All through SEC, I'm gonna let it shine. All through SEC, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.